I discovered in America is while grassroots communities are behind Afia Siddiqui and are campaigning for justice, along with the Muslim Legal Fund of America, the big main organizations like ICNA, ISNA and CARE are trying to sideswerve the whole case. They're trying to avoid being dragged into the case. They want to walk away. They want to look the other way. Well, it's the easiest thing in the world, isn't it? To look the other way, to walk the other way. But I'm telling you now, and I'm addressing the sisters more than um, the brothers upstairs, we are all Afia Siddiqui. We are as guilty or as innocent as Afia Siddiqui. Let me tell you something else about the sister. As I said, I was talking to her brother, and he said, you know, there has been a Hafiz in our family for centuries. It's a, tr a tradition that goes back so many years, we can't even go, we can't even tell you when it began. But for centuries, there have always been a Hafiz in each generation of our family. And Afia was our Hafiz. And he said not only could she recite the Quran, she knew and understood fully the context and the words that she was reciting. And he said, if Afia doesn't come out, we don't know who will hand that this tradition down in the family and continue this tradition. Afia is guilty of nothing more than piety. Everything that I hear about the sister leaves me full of admiration. I spoke to her brother's non-Muslim neighbors who met Afia in Texas, who came to know her very well. And they said that she was the most loving, giving, family oriented person. And now, nearly seven years on, she's sitting in a cell in New York, awaiting a trial that is more Mickey Mouse than, than Disney. It, it really is outrageous. The prosecution are scrambling around. What I also know is that um, there are some seriously worried people in the White House administration over this case because two of Afia's three children are still missing. Two of those children are American citizens. Now, George Bush said that the rules of the game had changed and we have since heard of horrendous tales of people being kidnapped, renditioned and tortured. I don't think the American people would put up with the idea of American citizens, of American children being kidnapped and abused. This scandal has the potential of being a bigger scandal than Abu Ghraib for the Americans, and they know it, and they are worried. And when Obama said before he was elected, sunlight is the best disinfectant, and I am going to have those terror files, those videos, those films of abuse and torture, I'm going to have them made public, I'm going to have everything open. He did a U-turn once he saw some of the evidence inside. You know why? Because there are pictures and images and videos of Afia in those archives, which prove that we have been lied to, lied to and lied to so many times. The ambassador in Islamabad is being specially briefed about Afia's case because she knows 
how volatile this whole thing could be. When the whole business of Quranic abuse surfaced and people marched and campaigned and demonstrated, it was the people of Pakistan who led the way. They were the ones who started the demonstrations and the rallies first, and it swept across the Muslim world. The ambassador of Pakistan knows she's sitting on a time bomb because once the full truth surfaces about what they've done to Afia, what they've done to her children, they know there could be a huge backlash. In many ways, I think that they just want the whole thing to go away and they're dithering and they're just not sure how to handle it. We have to keep the pressure up. Because, as I say, the big organizations in America at the moment are, are doing a side swerve. What is interesting is that um, fatwas are now being issued by some very senior clerics in Pakistan. And we've also heard from uh, Saudi as well that... Practicing Muslims cannot sit back and do nothing. If a Muslim woman is being held in a non-Muslim country in an unjust way. <coughs> so we have to do everything within our power. And when injustice is the law, resistance is our duty. Now resistance can be just signing this postcard, putting on a stamp and posting it. That is an act of resistance for a start. Go onto the Cage Prisoner website, write to Afia, send her a letter, tell her you love her as your sister in Islam, tell her she's not alone, don't make it political, just let her know that she is not alone. She's thrown in the towel now, she doesn't expect justice. She really doesn't. We have to keep campaigning for her. The Pakistan government, as I say, gave $2 million to a new legal team to, to fight for her. But there are other battles to be fought. We have to find her children. We have to try and find where they have been dumped. And it's not just Afia and Afia's children. There are brothers in Guantanamo who still don't know the whereabouts of their wives and their children. But because of cultural sensitivities and, and feelings of honour, it's not talked about, it's hidden away. We have to stop doing this. We have to get it out into the open and put away this talk of honour. The shame is on the Americans. The shame is on the West, not on us. And we have to get that through. So there's lots Lots more work to be done for the missing sisters, the missing children, as well as the, the continuing battle to get Guantanamo closed down and all of those brothers brought home. And on, um, on, that, uh, on that note, I would uh, just remind you again how important it is that we continue fundraising and I noticed a few sisters looking very glassy eyed and, and, and gasping when I went into the details of the suffering of Afia. I don't tonight want your tears. Sheikh Al-Adnani once said to people, don't give me your tears, blood is more valuable than tears. And I asked uh, somebody, what did he mean by that? And it's very easy for us all to sit here and cry about the condition of our sister and then go home and, and sleep well tonight. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to do something more. I want you to... <coughs> Give whatever funds you can to help CAGE continue this uh, fight, to pay for pictures and postcards like this and, and campaigns like this. We've already got the judge to change the strip searching with the legal team. We now want it to stop completely. 
If he did that after two, three hundred postcards from Britain, what is he going to do when he gets thousands of these? And by the way, this picture of Afia, a lot of people think this picture was taken after she was shot. This is what Afia looked like on the day she was arrested. This picture was taken of Afia on the day she was arrested by the governor of Ghazni. That's where this picture came from. So please, after Brother Mozam spoken, go to the, the back of the rooms, and I think there's some upstairs as well, there's books, there's postcards, there's all sorts of things you can do to help and support the work that CAGE is doing. We do need your help. <coughs> your pressure is working already. And finally, if I can ask you all as well, let's not forget the power of prayer and we must pray uh, for our sister Afia and all the others that have been held in the war on terror. And I know that there are plans um, later to have a, a global day of prayer for Afia, but that is um, in the future. And uh, maybe we can talk about that at another event. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum.